I welcome you all and I hand over to uh, Wojciech Wibrowski. He's the assistant supervisor, which in all other languages is translated as deputy, but only in English the legislator chooses slightly an um, appropriate thing. And we are very happy that he joined today and will give us uh, his own presentation on routes and paths on privacy by design. Thank you very much. Thank you, Achim. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. That's uh, probably ninth uh, workshop of IPEN that I'm taking part in. And it's always a great pleasure for me uh, to uh, meet you, but also the great privilege uh, to get the information and knowledge from you and to get to know what paths are at the moment the most important uh, for the privacy engineering in the world. And uh, uh, that's my pleasure to meet you here in Brussels. Uh, the, usually we organize uh, most of our workshops outside of the city, but this time we are here on the very special day, the Data Protection Day. That's the anniversary of the uh, co of the Convention 108, Convention of Council of Europe, uh, that in 1981 has uh, set uh, the basic background, I may say, for the data protection rules in Europe, and which is still recognized uh, as the cornerstone of the uh, development of the privacy law from the legal perspective. But uh, as you probably know, starting this mandate in 2014, uh, uh, we have prepared the whole house of EDPS, uh, but also Giovanni and me, uh, prepare, we prepared the strategy for this uh, mandate. Uh, and this strategy included one of the objectives, which was that the data protection goes digital. Which, of course, does not mean that the data goes digital, because data went digital 40 years ago. But it means uh, for us, it meant for us, and it still means uh, that uh, legal solutions are not enough uh, uh, for ha saying that uh, we are uh, in line with the privacy values uh, that are shared, uh, at least on this continent. And uh, we are absolutely sure that most of the decisions which are uh, the most important for the uh, data protection and privacy protection are taken on the level of the information systems and on the tools that we use. Uh, and actually, these are not the lawyers and these are not the legislators who are setting the standards, but this is the market and this is, these are the people who are preparing these uh, tools who are preparing that. And uh, the thing which I'm going to say a few words about is something that you hear over and over again, uh, especially from uh, uh, the beginning of uh, 20th century, the 21st century, when the idea of so-called privacy by design have been developed. What I would like to drive your attention to is the fact that the new rules uh, on data protection that exist in Europe uh, for already almost a year uh, recall the concept, which is not the concept which was born in Europe. The concept itself is definitely born outside. It comes from the different uh, legal and organizational culture, uh, but it has been uh, imported to the European standards and you imported to the standards of the legal regime that exists in, the, in this country. I'm happy to observe it and I'm happy to uh, try to help to implement it uh, in, on the European ground. Uh, the European Data Protection Supervisor, as most of you know, is the data protection authority of the European Union uh, institutions, uh, bodies and agencies. So we are not hierarchically over the other data protection authorities that exist in Europe. There are still 28 jurisdictions in this field uh, in Europe, but uh, there is also the 29th jurisdiction, and this 29th jurisdiction is uh, the European bodies, agencies, and uh, institutions, where Giovanni Buttarelli and me, we have a privilege with uh, our friends uh, from the office to uh, supervise the institutions, supervise the agencies, but also to take part in the legislative process uh, by uh, issuing opinions uh, to the legal acts on different levels that are prepared in the European Union. But we are also, <coughs> we are also here to prepare the background for cooperation, the foundations for the cooperation. 
And of course, it starts from the fact that we uh, prepared the Secretariat of the European Data Protection Board. But we always understood it a little bit more broad. So uh, we try to facilitate the international organizations, those that are not the uh, subjects of the GDPR or subject of the European rules, uh, to have the, the discussion between them on privacy issues. We want to uh, be uh, active uh, in the groups like Berlin Group uh, on the privacy and telecommunication. We want to be active in the groups like, GD, uh, like G, G, GPAN, which, which is uh, dealing with the global cooperation of the legal enforcers. But uh, uh, most of all, we want to drive our attention to the cooperation of those who are preparing the tools, who are preparing the information solutions, not only in Europe, which is our main field of uh, activity, but also on the global level. Of course, that goes after, uh, without saying that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the data protection is the principle uh, of the European Union law, that's a fundamental right uh, that is uh, envisaged in the uh, treaties, uh, but for us uh, to prepare this whole concept of data protection in the European Union, important is not only what is in the law, but important is what is in the practice. So of course, GDPR, of course, the legal, uh, the, the law enforcement uh, directive, uh, which is the second part of the, mm -hmm. the puzzles uh, that started to uh, started to be fully um, applicable on 25th of May last year. Of course, the new legal act that you probably some of you never heard about, uh, which is the uh, which is the regulation 2018-1725, uh, which is uh, uh, dealing with the data protection in the European institutions and uh, agencies. Uh, so in this European bubble that we are responsible for, but of course we are working on the global level. We are working on uh, on something which is by definition global approach. So we have to remember that this is the first moment in the history when we are not, uh, we as, the, as Europe, uh, are not in the majority if we think about the number of countries that have a comprehensive data protection regime. There are right now about 130 countries that we may count as having a data protection regime in the comprehensive way. But even this uh, picture that you have here is not full because there is a number of countries that have sectoral solutions in data protection, the number of countries which have the security uh, law the, or the, 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 uh, the cyber security law, which uh, covers part of the uh, topics connected with uh, data protection as well, or they have uh, the legal acts on the lower level than the statute uh, that are dealing with uh, data protection issues. It's also very hard to assess how strong this data, uh, this data protection laws are. This is the proposal of such uh, assessment done by one of the companies, one of the legal companies, uh, and you can see that this picture and the colors on that uh, are completely different than the ones that we saw uh, a while ago. And some of the countries which were not counted as having data protection law, uh, which is a comprehensive one, are still are here listed as the countries with a very strong regime of data protection. So it means that there are, the assessment is much more difficult because the legal cultures, because the organizational cultures, because of technical development uh, in these countries uh, may differ very much. So definitely there is no one way towards the, what we call the personal data protection regime. There is not, nothing uh, like the common uh, approach to privacy itself, and you are very well aware of that. And the first part of our today's workshop will be mostly devoted to this uh, subject. So this is why this year the European Data Protection Supervisor, or last year the European Data Protection Supervisor, has organized an international conference of data protection commissioners, uh, which was uh, held here in Brussels. And what you can see here in the picture, uh, the, pic uh, the slide, these are only the commissioners for data protection from all over the world. These are not all the, the participants of the conference. There were 1,200 people taking part in the conference here in Brussels, uh, plus additional people taking part in the side events in, in Sofia. And these were the representatives of the political community or, that, uh, or the, the commissioners pro, uh, community, but also the representatives of the business who were addressing us, uh, the representatives of the uh, civic society and those who are uh, 
the kind of founders of what we are all talking about uh, here, including Tim Berners-Lee. But of course, we had also the politicians with us uh, uh, who were uh, setting their or informing us about their priorities for the nearest future. We had the judges. The uh, pre president of the Court of Justice of the European Union, uh, Colin Lennertz, had a one hour and a half uh, lecture uh, on the jurisprudence of the Court of Justice in the field of the data protection, which actually was, uh, uh, were mainly the, co the cases connected with the inter uh, internet uh, solutions. So, all this uh, is the ground for the discussion on privacy by design as well. Privacy by design, which uh, appeared somewhere at the beginning of this century, as I said, which has been then uh, promoted by the Data Protection Commissioner's community, uh, including the, the, the recommendation and, uh, the, uh, and the, the resolution that was taken by the uh, International Conference in Jerusalem in, 2000, in 2010, setting this famous five uh, famous seven principles uh, of privacy by design, later on uh, embodied uh, into the law of the European Union by uh, GDPR, but also by our regulation. That's this regulation which is for the EU institutions, bodies and agencies, which is recalling the same words. But recalling the idea, recalling the philosophical idea which started to be the part of law, privacy by design and privacy, privacy by default, which, by the way, privacy by default being one of the seven topics that were been included by Anna Kavokian in, their, in, the, in her uh, philosophical concept. With a great call from the industry towards the legislators, the call that we heard over and over again during the, uh, the preparation of the GDPR, do not overregulate, do not write in the law, point by point, what you expect. Because in certain places, especially those that are dealing with the new technologies, you cannot invent and you cannot foresee how the, uh, how the solutions will look like in the future. For me, for the lawyer who is looking at this for, uh, for some years, uh, the best example of the situation where there was an academically perfect, no, maybe not perfect, very good law, that was created by the European Union, but which uh, actually didn't work in practice, uh, was the directive on electronic signatures. Well, well, from the academic point of view, that was a great concept. That was an uh, excellent idea, and uh, the good uh, uh, path uh, that was set for the future. The bad thing was that the technology and the business didn't want to follow this path. They found the other paths uh, to achieve the goals that were uh, to be found. So do not overregulate means then that we should go through all these uh, topics that were somehow recognized uh, by, the, uh, by, by the European um, legislator with the practical approach. Practical approach which uh, connects uh, all the American approach to that, all the Canadian approach to that, all the Korean, Australian, South African and etc. etc. approaches to this to these uh, seven topics uh, that uh, Anka Vakian was talking about. Not only privacy by default, but also all the things connected with embodiment of the uh, of this idea into the projects uh, as a whole, or the full functionality. What does the full functionality means, and what should be the positive sum uh, uh, in this uh, game? What should be the end-to-end -end security? what should be the life cycle management of the project, what means the transparency, and uh, uh, what uh, the respect to the user privacy is. And uh, remembering that one of our mottos for these uh, years uh, is that the big data means also big responsibility, I would like to invite you to the discussion on all the topics connected with the practical in implementation of these philosophical rules uh, in the existence or non-existence of the legal so, uh, solutions in uh, different uh, uh, continents. And uh, I would like to invite you to the further cooperation with the European Data Protection Supervisor. Uh, and that's probably the good moment to say also 
that while this event uh, is prepared by the team which was led by uh, Achim Krabunde, who is still the main organizer of the workshop, Achim is right now our principal advisor in the uh, EDPS, uh, advisor of Giovanni Buttarelli and me. But this is also the moment for me to uh, present and introduce uh, the new head of the ITP policy unit already, not a sector, but unit in the EDPS, Thomas Serdik, who took this uh, job from the 1st of uh, January 2018, joining us uh, from the European Commission, where he uh, recently was the, uh, uh, the member of the, of the cabinet of the vice president uh, of the uh, Commission, uh, Mr. Timmermans, but uh, has already 20 years of experience uh, uh, in uh, different places in the European Union uh, dealing with uh, privacy from the technological point of view and from the legal point of view. So I'm joining then the audience and I will listen to the discussion today. Thank you very much, Wojciech.